Welcome to uh, Martial Arts Studies Conference Day 2. I hope you are well. Uh, you already had coffee. Maybe next coffee is at the end of this uh, keynote. I have the pleasure to introduce our keynote number three. This is Professor Dr. Dr. Two Dr. Uh, Sven Kjolo. He studied sports science at the DSHS sorry, in Cologne and uh, was awarded the German Study Prize of the Kerber Foundation in 2001. 2008, he received his doctorate in philosophy, summa cum laude, from the Technical University of Darmstadt, and in 2021, his doctorate um, in pedagogy from the University of Applied Science in Freiburg. Sven became professor at the University of Hildensheim in 2009, representing the fields of sociology of sports and sports pedagogy at the University of Hildensheim. In 2011, he moved to the German Sports University in Cologne, uh, serving as head of the Department of Training, Pedagogy and Martial Research. In March of 2021, Sven started his master's studies in game-based media and education at the Danau University Krems in Österreich, Austria. His current research focuses on training pedagogy, the professionalization of police training in martial arts studies, Sven works for court and insurance companies and expert on questions relating to training accidents, personal injury offenses, and risk assessments. At GSEU, he also teaches practical courses, including wrestling and fighting and Krav Maga. Sven was a competitive athlete himself, being a former member of the German national team in full contact taekwondo, where he won multiple German championships titles and was a vice European cup winner. On a private level, he practices and teaches various self-defense styles, including combatives, uh, Krav Maga, and Wing Chun. So this evening for the martial arts demonstration, if we need an expert, if we have a minute, we turn to you. Sven, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Daniel, for the kind introduction. OK, I'm very uh, happy being here and having the opportunity to talk to you. Uh, you see, uh, we do bad things to bad people, um, is the presentation title. Kravagas career um, in the light of social systems theory and everything that will follow um, is the product of yeah, quite intense discussions with my colleague and friend Mario Staller, and that's the reason why his name is also mentioned on the slides, so just to give you this note. Okay. Um, if we first take a look um, at current research um, concerning Krav Maga, we can find some interesting clusters. So for example, um, we have kind of practical oriented studies on aspects of motor control, for example, or um, studies related to issues on training injuries um, by the Israel defense forces who are keen to know what are the key factors um, of uh, injuries in training and how to prevent them. We have, of course, a cultural and political um, oriented studies uh, presenting the thesis, for example, of Krav Maga serving as a social yeah, vaccine um, against violence within a still violent modern society, providing um, the sense um, of solidarity in a group or on a group or on a nation level, which is the work of Andre Moll. Um, and um, the other study, for example, um, focuses on Krav Maga as it means in the face of yeah, violent encounters of terrorist attacks we are facing worldwide. And then we have research on the origin, on the invention, on the history and the global spread of Krav Maga. Krav Maga, as data from uh, the colleague Guy Moore indicate, is currently practiced in 120 or over 120 countries around the globe. Geared towards the German situation, uh, Krav Maga has as well gained remarkable attention within the last 20 years. We had the opportunity uh, to make an interview with one of the yeah, early pioneers of Krav Maga in Germany, Oliver Bechmann. Um, and Bach Bechmann reported um, the very beginning of Krav Maga in Germany um, around the millennium. Um, so 2000, 2002, um, this has been the takeoff phase of Krav Maga and its spread in Germany. Since then, uh, Krav Maga um, spread around the country. Our current Google uh, research looking for Krav Maga representations in Germany revealed for this year 
674 national and international organizations, as well as independent Krav Maga locations and derivatives of Krav Maga. The overall growth of Krav Maga, uh, however, seems to yeah, have reached uh, um, the end. At least if you look at the table, there is a yeah, really small difference between the data from 2020 and the current data from 2021. 22. However, if we take a closer look, then Krav Maga has definitely spread around the country. Though having the most schools in Baden-Württemberg and North Rhine-Westphalia, so indicating a kind of west-east and south-north slope. So many schools in the south and the west and less schools in the north and in the east. Moreover, we identified uh, Germany's top 10 Krav Maga organizations. Please have a look at the table. Number one is the so-called Deutsche Krav Maga Verband. Second is Krav Maga Defcon. And interestingly, um, within this chart, only three international Krav Maga organizations um, made it into the top 10. All others, including number one and number two organizations, um, are German products and German trademarks of Krav Maga. That's why, I've, with, why I have indicated um, this as German drive, because it's uh, interesting in the, in the view that there's a social evolutionary development going on within speed of time. I mean, Pravnaga was invented in Germany 20 years ago, and we already have a spread and a differentiation of Pravnaga organizations, which is um, remarkable. I will catch up on this later in my presentation. The title of the presentation uh, was found during my research. Uh, the so-called Krav Maga Group Germany um, advertises its product with the set statement, we do bad things to bad people. Taking this data together, Krav Maga's career in Germany is quite a success. And the following, I want to dig here a little uh, deeper, uh, and it's an experiment. I choose social systems theory, uh, mainly um, introduced in its modern shape by Niklas Luhmann, a um, German sociologist. And the idea is to take systems theory and to put it on Krav Maga and to see, hey, where are we going out when <laughs> doing so? Importantly, as you can see above, um, I call it a systems theoretical perspective, making clear that everything that derives from now on um, derives through the use of a specific theoretical lens, using distinctions of system theory to make the world speak. Okay? So everything said here um, is set by an observer and is always related to this observation. So if you don't take or choose another observation, you would may come to different results. The first take of systems theory is that Pramaga can be observed as a social system, a social system within the environment of other social systems, like the police, economy, politics, media, and so on. And therefore, I'm utilizing the distinction between system and environment. That's easy. My second take is, as a social system, Krav Maga is grounded on difference-based communication. So communication, all it is, it's communication on two levels. First level of communication is the level of moving bodies, of interacting bodies, as Krav puts it, as interpersonal synergy that can be observed as a way of communicating to each other and with each other. The other level, of course, is all the communication about Krav Maga. The difference I'm using here is obviously fighting versus talking or writing. Just a quick note on how communication is seen within the system theory. It is a three-folded selection process, assuming the participation of alter, which could be a social system or a personal system, and ego, which also could be a social system or a person. And basically, communication has always an information and a form, and someone who connects, either with a punch or a 360 defense and counter attack, a word, a talk, a statement, a gesture, whatever. 
Communication is only communication if someone connects. It's very important for to recognize. He or she has to connect to what is said or what is done before. It consists, in other words, of recursive selections. Okay, once more, um, each connection is already a selection of information and the form itself. Within its recursiveness, Krav Maga as a social system emerges. And it only emerges this way. As a social system, Krav Maga is the iterative process of communication connecting to previous operations of the same type. So that was a more tough one, right? Krav Maga is communication. Third, and more easy, in functional perspective, using the distinction between solution and problem, Krav Maga can be seen as the solution of a problem of multiple problems in modern societies. That's quite easy to imagine. Just consider if violence occurs, Krav Maga can be seen as the solution, or at least it can be assumed that Krav Maga can be a solution for the violence issue. And the solution part of Krav Maga has something to do with what I would call the internal variety of differences. Krav Maga holds as its foundation. Krav Maga is based on differences. And I will elaborate on this in a few minutes in more detail. Fourth take. System theory states that Krav Maga is a social system. And as such, three levels of self-reference can be differentiated. So self-reference means that a system self gets into contact with itself. And this takes place on three levels. First level, the level of operation. The unit act of Krav Maga, or the key process of the system, if you like. The second level is the level of observation and reflection, in which Krav Maga would observe itself. In psychology, we would say the self-concept of the system emerges out of observation and reflection. And the third level is reflexivity, on which Krav Maga as a social system gains further options and higher order possibilities of self-control, of controlling the system. Next, I will navigate through these three types of self -reflection. On the first level, we have to address the question what the basic event, what the key process of Krav Maga is. And we propose it's self-defense. Self-defense is opposite to non-self-defense. On a level of its core operation, Krav Maga is self-defense. As easy it is. Please look at the video. So, I would assume that Krav Maga can plausibly be observed um, as a system with the key operation of self-defense or defending oneself. Self-defense versus non-self-defense is the key code of Krav Maga, but additionally, Krav Maga holds what I would say, from system theory perspective, as a flanking code or a side code that specifies the key code. And this side code is effectiveness. In the past video you watched, one guy was kicking the other guy and they continue to kick each other in the nuts. That's me. And refers to the side code of Krav Maga. Krav Maga is not only self-defense, it's effective self-defense. So that's very important to understand and shape the process of Krav Maga. Thereby, Krav Maga is separating itself from different branches of martial arts and self-defense. Or to put it in the words of Draheim, Draheim is a yeah, renowned author and a Krav Maga instructor in Germany, holding a huge Krav Maga organization. He states, the unique feature of Krav Maga is effectively, effectivity by all means. 
by all means. <laughs> so Krav Maga is me. It's not fair. In putting the code of Krav Maga this way, Krav Maga excludes itself as a self-defense system aiming for survival from art and sports. Bechmann, the German Krav Maga, kindly, you remember, coined it as follows. The strict focus on the needs of self-defense that did not exist at all in the use, and that did not exist at that time in any martial art, where there was clearly this difference between sport and art, like Aikido, Tai Chi. I found it only in Krav Maga. So this strict focus on the need of self-defense. Okay, let's turn from here to the second level of self-reference, the reflection of Krav Maga. On this level, Krav Maga is straightforward cognitive. The quotes you just heard are reflections about Krav Maga. And reflection is the process in which Krav Maga is talking and writing about a kind of self-observation. The self-description of the system is structured by binary schemes such as pure and non-pure, mean, fair, authentic, non-authentic, self-defense, non-self-defense. And as you can clearly see, Krav Maga as a social system has its preferred value, its preferred side. It's of course effective and not non-effective. It's of course pure and non-pure. It's of course self-defense and not non-self-defense. You get the point. Again, I'm now on the pureness of Krav Maga. Within its programs, Krav Maga shapes its processes through several binary schemes. And here, in Brahim's quote, it is the pureness. He states, Krav Maga is not a traditional or competition-oriented martial art, but pure self-defense, and this is a fight for pure, and as this, it is a fight for pure survival. Lastly, and third, switching to reflexivity as a type of self-reference. A further type of self-reference allowing for more systemic control. Reflexive mechanisms as feature of higher order evolution allow for more control. And basically, um, reflexivity consists of the application of a process on the process of the same type. So just imagine organizations who have learned to learn. They have more possibilities to control their processes and their reflections. Or imagine, let's say, science, which invented observation of observation. And through this, we go much deeper into, let's say, methodological discussions. Or take the political system. It's applying, at least in democracies, uh, power and power to initiate, initiate changes. So that's an example of reflexive mechanisms. And what would that be within the Krav Maga system? So if we state that the core process of Krav Maga is self-defense, effective self-defense, the reflexive mechanism would be to effectively self-defend the self-defense. What does that mean? It shows reflexivity, it is shown in the internal procedures of Krav Maga as a social system. For instance, within the procedures of trainer recruitment, the access to workshops and camps, who is allowed to join and which conditions. So that are decision-based, um, organizational policy-based and rule-based decisions drawn by the organization. Or within the curriculum and the dealing with it. Drahan, for instance, stated in his latest book that in his first book, he couldn't speak clear about Krav Maga techniques because it was forbidden for him to drop his knowledge. At that time, I was not allowed, at the time he wrote his first book, to write about techniques due to the association membership as my first book was already all brought as a betrayal of secrets. And he was excluded. The same applies to training itself. So, real Krav Maga can only be taught by a real certified Krav Maga instructor and you can only join by membership. So, these are mechanisms to control internal processes. 
Hopefully you remember my note on the German drive at the beginning, the high number of different Krav Maga organizations splitted from former organizations. And this process can truly be seen as a failure of control. But in a slight different view, it serves for the career, for the German career of Krav Maga. Because obviously, differentiation is unfailable, signed for connectivity and communication. There is a lot to talk about while organizations split from each other. It's like the Matrushka principle. <laughs> okay, I'm slowly coming to the end. Krav Maga as a social system can be observed as a solution, a solution for a problem or multiple um, social problems. First, its level of self-reference, you will have a huge variety of internal differentiations, pure or non-pure, effective, non-effective, authentic, non-authentic, with preferred values, with preferred sides. Second, those differences allow for yeah, connectivity in communication. <coughs> you remember, there's only communication if someone connects, if there is a connection. And that's the basis of Krav Maga's career, communication. And those differences contribute to both internally to a kind of identity work Ben Judkins may um, sign as immanent code or level of communication in his work. And externally, those differences allow for more adaptivity to social needs in the environment, to make a connection to the individual need for self preparation for self-defense or other motives. Germany has traditionally a broad background in martial arts and is a uh, highly differentiated landscape of yeah, combat sports, martial arts, self-defense systems. This can be traced back until the 1960s. And although very secure and safe as hell in Germany, there is a perceived perception of increased violence. And I emphasize it's a perceived perception. And Krav Maga as a social system, coding effective self-defense as its core serves here as a solution. Besides, it also serves different purposes as we have, as we have investigated in an own empirical study on motives of Krav Maga practitioners. They not only say I'm here because I want to learn how to defend myself, because they want to do something for the health, to be more fit, or for the aspect of social relatedness. Okay, Krav Maga can be treated as a solution, but it can also, in social, social systems theory perspective, seen as a problem at the same time. And I finally want to elaborate on this in two takes. First take, Krav Maga, the way it appears through the lens of systems theory, is likely to reduce social complexity. It's likely to reduce social complexity. And this can be made clear if we take three steps. First, let's take the social dimension. While Krav Maga states that there were we on the one side and bad people on the other side of the coin, scientific data on the reality of violent encounters and conflict dynamics reveal blurred lines between persons who are pretending only to defend themselves and the so-called perpetrators. It's blurred, it's not clear who's who. Second, within the content dimension, Krav Maga trainings are likely to prefer bad things, while conflict management literature says that conflict management and violent management or violence management has to play on a continuum ranging from, yeah, effective physical hard skills through soft skills, low profile means in physical manner, de-escalation tactics and strategies, and maybe also empathy. So it's a reduction of complexity taking place within the Krav Maga system. And third, the time dimension, which can be differentiated in two ways, on a micro level and on a macro level. On the micro level, Krav Maga is likely to handle violence as a linear process, 
So first this, then that. Is X, then Y. Again, scientific data on yeah, interactions indicate a non-linearity, especially when it comes to violence with social interactions. Especially if uh, yeah, the shit hits the fan in violent encounters, there is no linearity. It's always the product of observation, as we see, uh, for example, on courts. Yeah. We have to identify the <laughs> uh, action and the reaction, but these are constructions. On the macro level, Krav Maga tends to overestimate the occurrence of violence compared to the past. That, at least, is the truth for the German situation, where violence is not in general increasing. My second and last take. Let's check the elements of radicalization as identified by Borg and colleagues. Have a quick read. Krav Maga as a social system can, with all due caution, with all due caution, be seen as a context um, where it is worth reflecting upon um, the potential of radicalization, at least to reflect upon. Because if you take the key elements of radicalization, skillful storytelling to intensify conflicts, create a collective identity, in-group, out-group thinking and action, promotion of violent solutions, doing bad things, for example, and status upgrade through own risky behavior, maybe in terms of violence. There is maybe a match, and that there could be a match between Krav Maga, the structures of Krav Maga, differences of Krav Maga, and radicalization can be seen on the right side. This is a quote from the so called Mujahid Guide. It's a guide for interested um, terrorists. If you would like to become a terrorist, you can download this guide and you will get any information you need to become a terrorist. And even in this context of Islamic terrorism, Krav Maga is handled as hardship in terms of here you can learn how to defend yourself. Okay, I'll bring it together. How does Krav Maga appear through the lens, through the lens of social systems? First, Krav Maga is a social system based on communication and its successful career in turn, is based on the recursiveness of communication. It's all about communication. Second, Krav Maga's success is made possible through of an yeah, internal variety of differences, highly connective differences, effective self-defense, pure and authentic. Those differences allow for internal reproduction of identity, self-descriptions, Krav Maga as bad essence, <coughs> and external resonance. Resonance to other social systems, just take the representation of Krav Maga in social media, and also the structural coupling of individual psyches. We are informed about social media, what Krav Maga is, and differences, hey, this is effective and that is not effective, play a key role. And fourth and last, Krav Maga's communicative career indicates for sure that Krav Maga can be observed as a solution for current social needs, but that it can also be observed as a problem. Thank you so much. Thank you very much Thank you for fresh thought and efficient German thought of today. And uh, we now take questions, please. Yes, thank you for a very systematic analysis. I like it a lot. Uh, I have two questions if you if you allow me to. Uh, first one is on contextual basis. I mean, you talk about the uh, German situation and you look at it from that perspective, I assume. But your title reminds me a lot about, you might say, the slogan that we used in the US in, in relation to the gun control issue. 
by the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Uh, so that makes me wonder, which is kind of debatable, of course. But that makes me wonder, would your analysis have any, I mean, to what extent would your analysis be different if looking from any West uh, society, for example, perspective mm -hmm. there? Second one is just a brief one asking what are the policy recommendations or implications of what you have that you now analyze in terms of what would you say policymakers to deal with this issue about how to deal with uh, sport or or fighting system as crap and that should they recognize it, should they support it, should they subsidize it, or how how do you respond to that? Mm. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. Very good uh, questions. Uh, so to start with the first question, <coughs> the contextual issue. Yeah, <coughs> I became a friend of case studies. Um, and I could imagine that it would be pretty much the same at the end if we take, um, for example, self-descriptions of Krav Maga in the US or in the UK. And I could also imagine that um, the picture is more differentiated if we look at Krav Maga in Asia. I have been, for example, to South Korea and to Hong Kong. Um, and in those contexts, Krav Maga and self-defense is, yeah, has a different meaning. And assume a different representation, for example, on homepages on self-descriptions of Krav Maga organizations. But yeah, to take the US example, of course, the quote you, you just uh, mentioned um, points in the same direction. And I think it's quite interesting that that was the approach, and this um, leads to the second question. Um, I took a systems theoretical approach. Um, and I think always, um, always when you use a systems theory, you, you can have kind of both. So, one precise look after the current case, the situation in Germany, and I um, foremost mentioned German set of descriptions of problem are even if they are using um, an English term like we do bad things to bad people. It's interesting that the English sentence falls out in Germany. And on the other hand, um, due to system theory, you, you kind of always some, some general reports because it's very structured. You know? I, would, I would put the same question on the US situation. So is there a difference in, in specifying the, the core process of what I think? Is there any difference to, to this um, picture of effective or effectiveness and self defense? I would assume again it would be very similar, at least as I believe it was. And the second, um, yeah, more specific point um, system theory is not that good in giving practical implications, but they can be concluded. They can be concluded. For example, um, on the level of Krav Maga training. So for my Krav Maga training, for my own little Krav Maga schools, for Mario's Krav Maga schools, this way of analyzing what we do changed everything. The process of Krav Maga, as well as the way we describe our we put it in a social context. We are more differentiated. We take care of what we say. It makes a huge difference whether you're telling the students, hey, um, you, you, you're here, you're learning to affect yourself because uh, there's always a danger out there. Take care. And I'll tell you to watch it or you do it a different way. And we're doing it a different way. So this is one practical example. And for this, you have to understand what's going on. How Krav Maga as a social system um, appears in the community, in the communicative manner. And uh, the second level of, of implication, I would draw in the direction of science, of science. So to understand that we have to take care in describing the world. So this is a practical implication for the science. When you're using systems theory, you always have to, have to mention your index. You know, what is the distinction where you are starting from? I'm observing Krav Maga. They're telling uh, we are effective versus not effective. What, what, is, what is my distinction as a scientist? So I have to control that too. Is that enough? Yeah. Well, you didn't mention the word policy. Sorry? You didn't mention the word policy. A policy. Yeah, a policy. Well, <clears throat> I would policy not... makers do something with your analysis. That's my question. Right. Policy makers. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that is an effect I cannot control. I, I wish they would do that. And as I said, for my own Krav Maga school, I can, I can change my policy. And I said, I changed my policy, um, even if I don't use the term policy, but it's a change in policy, actually. But I, I do not have a, a causality to, to initiate changes, for example, in other Cologne Krav Maga schools. So, I mean, we have to distribute our knowledge and let's see what happens. So I'm very humble in terms of uh, being effective as a scientist uh, to reach the world. It's all about connection. Yeah. Just, just to follow up from that, uh, in your own association, are you able to introduce some of those factors you showed in that wonderful uh, graph of reality versus uh, and in particular, I'm thinking about um, how in a certain situation, uh, the soft approach, even empathy, might be better. Um, I've had personal experience of that, sympathising with someone trying to attack me. It worked wonderfully. But if I, as the potential victim in this situation, had an imaginary of myself as this high-powered fighter, I could have made a terrible mistake. Mm -hmm. So are you able then to soften the edges of the Krav Maga um, yeah. ideology, I suppose? Yeah. Yeah. Very good question. And of course, of course, I mean, that, that's the message. Um, for me, as I said, it changed a lot and changed also our way we train and our, our way of designing, for example, problems in training. So if you like, you can join our um, evenings training. Mario and me, we will try to, to give a couple of minutes of this type of training that opens for a continuum of solutions. Mm -hmm. So not only focusing on problems that have to be solved in a physical manner, but also uh, and at the same time, if you like, all of a sudden, you have to have empathy. And for this, you have to understand this is a quite different situation if someone has a, for example, mental issue problem by holding the mask. It's not going to attack you. So, um, yeah, very practical implication for our training is to play on this continuum. Thank you. And given the quite, seems quite strict ideology behind it, have you as a club within the Catholic world been criticized for maybe softening or reducing the purity of it? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's part of, of the career of Batman. That's the good part. So it's, it, it is a good discourse. And yeah, that finally led to, to a separation, of course. So I've been um, at my Krav Maga trainer education, in a huge Krav Maga organization. But due to different approaches, different insights, um, I changed my point of view and changed, of course, um, the organization. So we don't call it organization anymore. We're just a school. They're running the school. But yeah, if you talk to, let's say, passionate crevices, um, you, you will get pretty. But that's good. It's a good sign. You know, we can talk about it. I've got three more questions and then oh, four more questions. And then we stop. Alex, I think it's a really interesting presentation. I always just um, pick up on fascinating point about that rationalization the dynamics of this discourse. As a group characterization. I'm wondering if you say a little bit about uh, whether there's any um, sort of over politicization in crime with our schools, you know, really polarizing, polarized political times, and these kind of ideals lend themselves quite nicely to certain ideological worldviews. So I wonder if it's in different schools, is there any sort of sweeping, maybe even over ideologies that this, um, this shores up? Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Alex. Very interesting um, question. We have to focus on the future. That's our aim. I mean, we have to get data. On this. Um, although I do have a different approach to Krav Maga, the only way to find more um, information on this is to get into the field and do some kind of ethnographic study. And that is the aim of the future. Um, I can only tell you from a different a uh, similar context, uh, urban combatants, senior urban, former senior urban combatants, instructor too. And uh, yeah, this combatants formed 
turned into that kind of distinction. I can tell them it's also about my experience that that means that we which in turn led me to to separate from this organization. It may be a mistake because I did not have any information, but there was a radicalization going on and a political radicalization. But that was clearly in group, out group, and it was clear who was the end. That's located in the UK. Not an interesting subject. Yes, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I especially like the point about the radicalization, which um, was quite interesting to me. Um, but the question I, I have um, from your observation, I mean, not as a practitioner, but as a researcher, would you really say that Krafmaga is all about self defense, or is there also something different? I mean, you spoke about marketing, I think there's also in some organizations, there's also a kind of belt system and certain dresses or, um, let's say, costumes in, in quotation marks. So, um, would you say that this is really about self defense or is it more about aesthetics or mentality, let's say? And if yes, how would you? Um, we argue that it's uh, Did I get it right? Aesthetics of brutality? Yes. Aesthetics of brutality. Okay, I would include aesthetics of brutality into this, this approach of Krav Maga being an effective self defense system. At least that is my observation. Okay. So if you take uh, organizations here, craft <laughs> revolution, or you can fight, uh, you, you will always see this aesthetic of brutality in every training sequence. Badass moves. I, I, I don't think um, that I get your your definition of this, but it may be what you mean, right? Yeah, I mean, like for example, in in Taekwondo, for example, we have also this let's say self defense part of training, and mm -hmm. obviously not about self defense, but it's just like I don't know, like ten techniques in a row how to harm someone very badly. Mm -hmm. Like we stomping the groin like for five times or whatever, you know. Yeah, okay, that, that's another um, interesting uh, question. Um, of course, um, I think um, at, at some locations, Krav Maga is going the other way. So taking this effective self-defense uh, defense approach, but due to whatever consideration, it's also opportune to, to put focus on fitness or on health issues or something else. Yeah, so that would be uh, the opposite um, evolution um, as I described here. So here, at least what I was looking for is Krav Maga and the main Krav Maga representations in Germany. And they're dominantly, predominantly describing themselves as an effective self system. And it's like a, yeah. It's a clear distinction not to be like the rest of the martial arts, as mentioned by Beckmann. Who said, okay, Yu Jutsu is another example besides Taekwondo. They do have an art branch, they do have a sports branch, and they do have a self defense branch, but nothing is, is really focused, at least um, in the direction of self defense. Okay, I have six, and then you, and then we stop. The burning questions will be taken to the couple. Thank you, Sven. That was great. Um, should there be several branches, several organizations in which Krav Maga split uh, in Germany? Um, as an outsider, they all mix up for me. I cannot keep them apart. When we talk about your know, second and third level, about the reflectiveness and reflectivity of the discourse, they produce themselves about Krav Maga. To me, it looks more or less all the same if we wrestle through these, um, um, these points that you mentioned. Um, would you say that among these organizations that you mentioned, there are some, or there is one, that is in whom they reflect it on themselves, and the reflexivity and also the, the presentation of themselves to the outside is radically different? Or is my impression correct that even though they split up, it's still more or less the same how they claim what they do? So, exactly uh, the letter I would say, it's like the Matrushka. Yeah. Yeah. So, but they are differentiating at some point due to unknown reasons or maybe unknown reasons. Um, but then they are taking the code and they're taking the, the, 
dominant description of government government by taking the dominant reflexive mechanisms. So keeping secrets as secrets, etc., taking care of the decision groups who can join and who can't join. So they take the same structure and put it into a new costume. Any questions here? Um, yeah, thank you for this very uh, interesting talk. Um, so what I've been wondering from a system, social systems theory uh, perspective, you also have experience with Wing Chun, right? Yeah. So in the German uh, Wing Chun um, community, to me seems very similar actually in arguing for effectiveness as this main thing. How would you say would these two systems differ? Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, again another very good question. Um, we, we wrote um, a paper and we did an analysis on the Wing Chun situation in Germany. It's, it's, it's not the same, uh, let's say, structure of analysis um, as I have presented here, but at some point the same. For example, if you take the binary um, schemes of Wing Chun, they are somehow different. So which emphasizes to be very modern in terms of being a very effective self-defense system, but at the same time being very, very traditional. So you put like tangent points uh, into the self-description, whereas Krav Maga uh, pretends always to be very modern, although it has a tradition, of course, but the tradition is traced back only few years. I mean, for Wing Chun, the same is true, but um, the myth, at least in the self-description, is that Wing Chun can be traced back to the yeah, Shaolin, uh, whatever, you know. So there are differences. There are similarities and there are differences. But you wouldn't, for example, in the EWTO organization, which is, I think, the biggest one in Germany, mm -hmm. do you, can you uh, observe this aspect of radicalization there, or we say that's really only unique to Krav Maga uh, organization? <laughs> I have not been, I'm, I'm practicing Wing Chun as well, but I have not been, luckily not been in the EWTO. Everything I hear from there, and everything I know from other matrushkas derived out of the EWTO is that there is a, a radicalization going on, but maybe not a political, but more of a spiritual kind of radicalization. <coughs> but maybe the, the text uh, on Wing Chun uh, recommendation for you. We can never talk about Wing Chun, be frank. Sorry to ask a question and answers, but uh, we both did already a few minutes of this. Uh, the rest of the questions have been taken to the coffee. I would like to thank you, the speaker, and then for the questions. <laughs>